Hey guys, welcome back. It's Chef Andrea and we are doing another cookbook corner. It's been a little while, so I'm um, glad to be back here. I actually, it's funny because for you guys, it might feel like I was just here one minute ago. I actually recorded, I stockpiled some recordings. Um, I did a few cookbook corners in August to get us through September, October um, with the intention of taking November off um, from recording. So in my world, I haven't recorded since the summer and it is now December this week. <laughs> so welcome. If you are new here, uh, you are absolutely so welcome. And if you are returning, thanks for coming back. I'm really glad to have you here. So um, we are going to talk about a couple of things, uh, admin style, um, where the podcast is going. We're shifting some things out to a little bit more of a vlog. As you can see, I'm referring to myself as Chef Andrea. If you're new here, I am a chef. I own a cooking school here in Northeast Florida. And all of my recordings up to this point for the last year and a half have been from my cooking studio and devoted to Cookbook Corner, which we're doing today, where I review cookbooks from my own collection. Also Q&A with Chef A, where I answer culinary questions or go into a deep dive about something particular, uh, curries or olive oils or butters. Um, we're going to switch gears a little bit. And so I'll talk more about that towards the end of this and throw a little chapter header on it. So if you are a Gumroad subscriber or a long-term YouTube subscriber and want to know more about where this is headed in the vlog format, you can stick around at the end for that. Um, if you're just here for the Cookbook Corner content, you can play through this and then cut, cut it off and have a day. Okay, the cookbook that we're going to work on today is The Nourish Kitchen. Um, and this is interesting. The Nourish Kitchen by Jennifer McGruther. So there's her name there. Take me out of it and you can see it better. Um, this cookbook, I actually referred to this in another cookbook corner that I did for you guys. I did a cookbook corner called Power Plates. And I love that book, and I think it's absolutely gorgeous. And if you haven't watched that one, if this one's of appeal, Power Plates probably will be as well. But in the Power Plates cookbook corner, I threw out a little schmug and schmug about my own kind of journey in 2022 with health, diet, weight, um, et cetera. I just mentioned that I had been going through a bit of a journey as far as all of that's concerned, and I think that's a a fair way to put it, and said in that um, episode, if anyone was interested in me going into a deeper dive about some of my personal, um, I guess, battles with, but journey through, um, trying to eat in a nourished way, be healthy, uh, but also battles with weight as I age, and what all of that means and how I'm working through all of that. And boy, did I get some responses. A few of you commented on YouTube, but a lot of you guys sent me private messages over on Instagram asking me that, uh, well, just sharing with me that you would very much like to hear more about that. So I will do that. I'm going to do a separate video um, that will be called um, My Nourished Kitchen. And uh, maybe I'll just call it a journey. So if you're interested in that one, you can find that on this channel as well. Okay, so Nourished Kitchen, let's do a cookbook corner and review this book. I've had this book for a while, actually, Farm to Table Recipes for the Traditional Foods Lifestyle. I don't remember when I bought it, and I was looking yesterday to try desperately to find for you guys a publication date on it, and I don't know why my little brain is just not sp spotting it. But it's been out for a bit. I have no question that you could find it easily on uh, Amazon or something like that. Um, but the photographs in this book are worth it. Um, you know, we all love a cookbook that just is inspiring to look at, even if we never cooked anything out of it. But let me give you a little bit of an idea of what she's got going with this Nourish Kitchen. As I see it, what this book really is, is a collection of recipes that are devoted to kind of building um, a new way of eating, a slow way of eating. She has recipes that will start to build your pantry, um, fermented items, preserved lemons, uh, things that you will build and hang on to. Um, she has recipes that will build your refrigerator with um, homemade yogurts and kefirs and things of that nature. She has recipes for a beet salad, so just something you would eat for dinner. So it's a kind of a big mix, but when you look at that big hole, I think what she's creating here is a kitchen, right? A nourished kitchen, this sort of 
different approach to food and eating and cooking. Um, it's a lifestyle as much as a cookbook. And I really love that concept. So um, a couple of things that I will show you out of here. Let's just start with some recipes and then we'll get into the stuff that really just sent me through the roof on this one and made me so happy. I'm going to start with this one. I think this is a great example of why this cookbook um, can be fun for a home cook. I want to say briefly that um, Jennifer McGruther's focus on food is whole food eating, meaning every category. So she eats um, poultry and red meats and pork. She eats dairy. <clears throat> Excuse me. I think if you are vegan or vegetarian, there are still a lot of wonderful things in this book. Um, so I'll, I'll share that. And we all have different reasons for eliminating food groups, whether they be conscientious objectors to the dairy industry in the United States, which is valid, my friends, um, or just that dairy doesn't work with us. You know, we don't digest it well or whatever. We all have our reasons for it. And I support whatever you need to do to keep yourself healthy and comfortable. Um, it's her approach is that She's bringing everything into the show. You take from it what you need is my suggestion there. Okay, roasted beet and walnut salad with spiced kombucha vinaigrette. Here is a great example of why this book makes me really happy. First, let's look at the gorgeous photograph. So there's that beautiful photo. The raw red onion on top, I just think is such a nice crunchy sharp bite compared to the sweetness, the sugar that's gonna come out from roasting those beets. And then, of course, these beautiful walnuts, you know, these are so good for you. And don't you find, I think it's hard to get, we know we're supposed to get so many servings of nuts uh, a week into our body. And I find it tricky. Like, you just stand in front of the pantry and gnaw on a couple of nuts. Yeah, I mean, I suppose we all could. But a garnish on a salad like this is a great way to go. But what really jazzes me here is the kombucha vinaigrette. You know, I love the concept of consuming fermented um foods for probiotic reasons, um, and certainly kombucha. But you know, there's only so much semi-vinegar water you can drink in a day, right? Like are we all just doing kombucha shots all day? There's a point at which you kind of like, what do I do with this? A vinaigrette, bing, what a brilliant idea. So we get all of the benefits of that kombucha, but without having to do a vinegar shot. So I think that's really fun um, and a great example of the kind of stuff you'll find in here. And this one certainly is vegan and vegetarian friendly. So lots of great stuff. Um, let's look at a few other pages that I flagged for you. I thought this was really interesting. She does uh, seafood, but it's funny to me because when I say seafood, I think saltwater fish. So she does a lot of um, uh, freshwater seafood as well, trout and things like that. But she also works with oily fish, which we're all, we know we're supposed to be eating, right? Sardines and mackerel and... Again, like how do you, it, that's tough, isn't it? I think it is. In America, it's tough to get those things into your diet. Um, it's a tricky thing. And so she gives us some great formulas. But one of them here is for mussels, mussels with apples and cream, you know, mussels with garlic and butter, like forever and ever. How about a twist on that? And I love the concept of the sharp, um, the sharp apples, the cider. Um, and then she uses a bit of heavy cream, and I don't think there's any reason why you couldn't just eliminate that and go with kind of a cider vinaigrette for these instead. But here's her mussels. So a little bit of green apple, and you can see the mussel there. So here's a thing about mussels that you may not know, or you may, which is that mussels per serving have more omega-3s than uh, wild salmon. They're incredibly healthy. They're very uh, uh, good for you. And do you know, I was listening to an um, interview with I believe he worked for the Atlanta Aquarium and he was talking about the health benefits of eating mussels and he wishes more people would eat mussels because the farming uh, practices for mussel farms apparently is incredibly sustainable um, and in fact beneficial to our environment. It, there, there are such things as good farms. And the thing about mussel farming is that it doesn't go out, it goes up and down. So it's a very small footprint in these sort of netted estuaries. And they tend to put them in places on the coastline that are uninhabitable by people anyway. So they're not using up coastline that should have been used for something else. And it's protecting that coastline. It's protecting those craggly, rocky coasts that we need to prevent erosion and otherwise by by making it um, a farm instead of trying to develop it into, you know, million dollar housing. So um, mussels with apple and cream. Um, 
But when I was listening to the interview, he said even frozen cooked mussels, like they're ready to go at the grocery store, frozen. They've already got a tomato garlic sauce on them. Great. They still have all those same health benefits and they certainly are very easy to prepare. Um, so you do not need to go find your own mussels. Look at this one. This is prawns with almonds and garlic. There it is again, you know, trying to get a serving of almonds in every few days. Uh, you know, I just throw them on my salads, but it would, what a beautiful concept to have that crunchy toasted almond next to that soft, you know, kind of chewy shrimp. But look at the photo of that. I love this. Now, shrimp is something I do get into my regular routine at home. The one, they're incredibly accessible here, of course. I live in Florida. However, they're quick. They're really easy to make, you know, cook up. I slack on things like, um, you know, mackerel and stuff like that. So I like to get excited about that if I can. Um, comforting foods in the Nourished Kitchen book. Uh, cream of wild mushroom soup with a little fresh thyme. I love that idea. Um, just to, I love cream soups anyway. Uh, this is interesting. Corey, now remember I said, because she's a whole food, so every category. But she, I'll tell you a little bit more about her theories on that. But she's very much, um, it, all of her meats, animal proteins come from um, local farm sources, if not her own farm. So you, you know what I'm saying? Like she's not out buying grocery store stuff. So this is an elk backstrap. But this could be venison, this could be beef, and this could be a pork loin or tenderloin. Either way, all of that would work well. But it's a coriander crusted elk backstrap with a spiced plum sauce. Um, I love it. And look at this photo on her section from the orchard. I mean, don't you want to just sit down with a cup of tea and just look at her recipes in from the orchard? Beautiful. And of course, there are some really gorgeous apple desserts and things of that nature that you would expect. Look at this one. Roasted peaches with basil and a dollop of homemade yogurt. Peaches, basil, homemade yogurt. Ah, oh, summertime. Let's do it. Isn't that gorgeous? So really beautiful collection of usable recipes. But as I mentioned to you, what excites me about this book is her philosophies. Um, of her philosophy about eating, about the Nourish Kitchen. So her contents here are from the garden, from the pasture, from the range, from the waters. So see what I mean? I said seafood, but it's she does fresh water and stuff too. From the waters, from the fields, from the wild, from the orchard, and from the larder. And so that's where she's going to have you making your own kombucha and sauerkraut and pickles and that sort of thing. Really fun. Um... She talks in her introduction about a traditional foods movement. These are the foods of our great-great-grandmothers, the foods of gardens and farms. They represent a system of balance, emphasizing the value of meat, milk, grain, bean, vegetable, and fruits. And again, to my vegan and vegetarian friends, it's not meant to um, judge a, a, a diet that is eliminating meats um, and milk, but her emphasizing the value of all of those things, um, if they work for you, in proportion, right, to one another. I and mean, one of the things that is not traditional is drive through. And so we drive through fast food and pick up these, you know, toxin loaded burgers, mystery chicken nuggets. That's that's what she's saying. Get that type of meat eating does not need to be a part of our world but we can incorporate meats if we hunt them or farm them ourselves, if that works for our diet. And it's fine if it does not. Um, I am a meat eater, but FYI, I actually have to come up with a lot of vegetarian sources for some of the same um, minerals that I would get out of meats because I just simply don't find time in my schedule or my week to prepare meats as often as I would need to, to get all of those nutrients from them. So I, for example, have a litany of um, vegetarian sources for iron because I tend to go iron poor very easily. And so, but I can't, I, not only can I not eat steak four times a week, who wants, to? I don't want to. Um, so anyway, uh, let's talk about her theories here. Traditional foods is a system of connection. It's finding a place for fat and lean, animal and vegetable, raw and cooked. 
Where other diets and philosophies of eating emphasize good and bad, black and white, a message of balance exists within the traditional foods movement, focusing not only on how the food is produced, but also on how it is prepared so that we can maximize the nutrients it contains. Traditional foods movement calls you back to the kitchen to real home cooking. I, that's it, I'm sold. I love this. I love what she's saying. Um, people who, uh, she talked about a study that was done um, on from a dentist in Canada, and he was talking about dental health. And the more varied the diet was, the better the dental structure. I think we could all consider that that would make great sense. Healthy people consumed unrefined, unprocessed foods. That's a big part of this theory. And you, if you've been with me in classes, you know how I feel about processed foods. I do not believe in eliminating anything from your diet um, that just for the sake of, like trendsetters. We're not eating fat. Nonsense. You need fat. We're not eating carbohydrates. Nonsense. You need carbohydrates. Um, I'm not a, eliminate it because a new hot book came out that said I should eliminate it. What I'm into is incorporating in a balanced way. And I share that a lot of, at, at my studio. What I will say that I can give you a blank canvas of eliminate, just take it out, processed. If it is ready to eat, um, healthy people consumed unrefined, unprocessed foods. Their diets comprised foods from both animals and plants, including vitamin-rich animal fats, mineral-rich broths, liver and organ meats, as well as other nutrient-dense foods. Um those are some of the things we've really gotten away from, aren't they? And I struggle with that too, guys. Don't get me wrong. I mean, one of the great iron sources would be if I ate liver on a regular basis. I don't. <laughs> um, I like liver, but I mean, it's just, you know, how it goes day to day. We're like, are we going to fry up some liver for breakfast? No, we're going to eat a granola bar in the car while honking at people in traffic. Um, philosophy of the Nourish Kitchen. Um, as I choose what and how to cook, I focus on simple, uh, excuse me, I focus on a simple philosophy that combines sustainability, balance, tradition, and community involvement. And her community involvement is that she sources from local co-op farms, um, farm stands, uh, small producers, etc. That's the community involvement as I understand it from reading her book. And balance. Um, I, well, here, I'll read you what she said about that, by the way, the sustainable. When I spend my money locally, I purchase from Farm Direct through CSAs, farm stands, and farmers markets. I ensure that the agricultural roots of my community are well fed. So that's the idea of sustainable community in the way that you eat. Um, and that farmers profit from the hard work they undertake nurturing the soil. What a lovely concept that is too, isn't it? Oh, I'm talking fast this morning. I had a lot of coffee before I got on here. Balanced. Um, there is a deeply pervasive disconnect in the collective relationship with food that persists in American culture. We often view healthy eating as synonymous with restrictive eating. Okay. Um, I did a highlight and exclamation point, and then I went back and underlined it because highlighting and exclamation points weren't enough. That sentence right there, guys, if you've been with me at the studio, you've heard it because I've been talking about it for 15 years. If you go back on YouTube, if you just search my name, Andrea Rosenblatt, there is a video out there from like the month we opened, which, oh my hair, the month we opened was, I don't know. Anyway, it's from the spring of 2007, this video. And at the very end of it, I think she asked me something about what's my basic food philosophy. And I answered the question with these words eat real food. Okay. So this concept has been my concept, my Bible, what I've held onto and tried to share at the studio from day one. This is not new to me. Um, I have always shared the concept that our diets need to be based on what we eat, not what we eliminate. I'm on a diet. What diet is that? The no carb diet. That's elimination. Your diet by nature, when you look at that word, what it means, it's about what you put in your mouth, not what you're not eating, right? If I listed all the things I'm not eating, I'd be here for a year. Let's list what I am eating. That's pretty limited selection for most of us, isn't it? And that is my diet. 
She is 100% on board with that same philosophy. Our diet is not about elimination. It is about consumption. So if we're going to take control of our diet by choosing what we put in our mouth, not choosing what we avoid, then my, oh my, doesn't the world of food open up to us and allow us to start to consider, well, why aren't I bringing in this? And maybe I could try some of that. And I'd like to add a little bit of this as well. Um, and that to me is like spin the world on the top, new theory in food for so many of us. And even though it is what I teach and what I preach, what I want to tell you is that day to day, I get trapped in the same vortex that you guys get trapped into, which is the news tells me I shouldn't eat this. The, you know, um, magazine covers tell me I shouldn't eat this. Uh, the world tells me I'm supposed to look like this. I tell myself in order to look like this, I can't eat these, right? Do you know that vortex, ladies, especially ladies, because we've most of us have been in it since our teens. To flip that around to, I want to feel my best. I want my skin to glow. I want my eyes to be bright. How do I get there? Beta carotene, iron, vitamin D. How do I get there? Shaking pills at, at the grocery store aisle, um, vitamin aisle is not the answer. Over in produce, that's the answer. Out at the farm stand, that's the answer. Our kitchen, that's the answer. That's exciting, isn't it? I think it's really exciting that we can open up the world of nutrition through what we eat and feed ourselves instead of what we eliminate. Where did we, how do we get here? How is it always about deprivation instead of inclusion? Uh, when it comes to our food choices. And this book, if I'm going to have to sum up what this book does for me, is she is a really strong supporter of the concept of inclusion in our diets versus deprivation. And again, I say to my vegans and vegetarians, I don't consider a vegetarian diet a deprived diet by any means. You've made your choices about animal proteins. You have so many resources for these minerals and for these choices and for delicious foods without animal protein. So 100% on board with that. That's not where I'm going. It's the arbitrary deprivation, right? Some celebrity said that we shouldn't eat blank, and so we stop. Some magazine cover threw an image at me that made me feel I should be look, trying to look like that, and so I stopped eating these, right? That's the arbitrary deprivation. Let's move into intentional inclusion. And this book, Nourish Kitchen, makes me want to be intentional and it makes me want to include things into my diet. And that is exciting. So um, let's talk about a couple exciting moments in this book. I took some notes here. Okay, one thing I want to mention to you guys is that in within her sustainable farming concepts, oh, I wanted to show you this too. This is a salmon dish that she does. Get my face out of there. So that's salmon and she baked it whole, like a big chunk of salmon that would serve four people. You cut that into four fillets. You know, we forget to do whole seafood like that. It's always fillets, fillets, fillets. Um, back in the 80s, everybody had that big salmon poacher. Man, if you ever watch a movie from the 80s and they're cooking dinner, there's one of those in the background. Um, whole fish, like doing a whole big side of salmon like that is so convenient. Just throw the whole thing on a rack in the oven and roast it up. I love cold leftover salmon flaked into salads like quinoa salads and uh, wild rice salads and things like that. So um, there's that side note. A couple notes that I took here. In her world of inclusion, and I marked some pages, one of the pages she has here on page 114, she talks about, she it's titled, In the Defense of Lard. Um, I think this is a great example of what I'm talking about for arbitrary exclusion and some of us don't even know why. How many people, when I just said, in the defense of lard, just went, ee, right? <laughs> lard, no, that's what my great-grandmother ate on the farm. No, 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 it's terrible for you. Um, where do we get that info? Where do we get these concepts? Listen to this, so interesting. Of all the animal fats, lard is without a doubt the most maligned, the most hated, the most feared. Butter gets a pass, but lard still remains nearly universally despised. I will share something with you. I cook with lard. I eat lard and I revel in lard. 
Toward autumn, ranchers in our valley send their pigs, which have grown fat on forage and kitchen scraps, to the processor for slaughter. I always ask them, please reserve the fat for me. I take it home, mince it very finely, and render it on the stove over low heat for several hours until it produces a perfectly creamy, snowy white fat. Um, at the beginning of the 20th century, industrially produced vegetable fats like margarine, which, by the way, you do know that margarine is whipped vegetable oil, right? And... At the beginning of the 20th century, margarine was whipped vegetable oil, so maybe a mix of corn and veg oil. Now, today, if you go buy margarine, it's usually whipped palm oil. That is, that is terrible for you, just FYI. Um, even the, the oils that we're using for our <laughs> stuff have changed so much over 100 years, they're terrible. Vegetable shortening, soy, and corn oils began replacing traditional cooking fats like lard, tallow, and butter. And for several decades, these modern fats were championed for their perceived, perceived health benefits, while the animal fats, which nourished prior generations, remained largely ignored, or in the case of lard, actively discouraged. While many people squirm at the idea of using lard, it simply doesn't deserve its bad reputation. The primary fat found in lard is monounsaturated. Did you know that? That is the same fat that is found in olive oils, for example. And if you remember the whole um, cholesterol man story, do you remember that story? A uh, guy shows up from Italy and checks into an American hospital and has his cholesterol checked and it is through the roof. But the guy is incredibly healthy for his age. You know, he's in his late seventies and he's just, you can see that he's a picture of health, but his his cholesterol levels are through the roof. This was the beginning of doctors learning that there are two types of cholesterol. There are bad cholesterol and good cholesterol. And the monounsaturated fats raise our good cholesterol levels. And it turned out that this guy from Italy had been eating nothing but olive oil as his sole source of fat for his entire life. And so actually what was high very high were his good cholesterol levels and his bad cholesterol levels were non-existent. And that is why he was also very healthy. So the primary fat found in lard is monounsaturated fat, the very same fat found in olive oil and avocados. This is thought to support cardiovascular health and optimal cholesterol levels. Further, pigs raised outdoors on pastures with plenty of access to nature, natural sunlight, manufacture ample amounts of vitamin D. You know, that's why your cat lays in the window, right? And why your dog goes out and lies in the sun, that's their internal instinct to pull vitamin D in from UV rays. That's what drives that. And yes, also the windowsill is warm when the sun's shining on it. Um, so they manufacture ample amounts of vitamin D in their skin and fat, making lard from pasture-raised pigs one of the best food sources for vitamin D. Not little shiny pills from the grocery store food for vitamin D. And I will say that as grown adults, sometimes vitamin D can be a tricky one, can't it? Because we always picture like milk being the answer. And no, I do not drink a gallon of whole milk every week. Um, but finding sources for vitamin D, well, here's one. In a culinary sense, lard gives us braised meats and vegetables, or, excuse me, lard gives braised meats and vegetables a rich mouthfeel and can be used to make pastry with a flakiness that's difficult to achieve with other cooking fats. We wonder why grandma's pie crust was grandma's pie crust. You know what? Rendered lard is probably the reason. Crisco doesn't get there. Butter by itself doesn't get there. Um, so it's an excellent source of monounsaturated fat, fat-soluble vitamins like vitamin D and others. Side note, and I will put a link to this in the show notes here today. Um, we have a family friend, Charles Mayfield, who runs a farm, Mayfield Farms. And one of the things that he has created through his farm is his skincare line. Um, and I'll show you this. Um, one is skin food. And I'm going to take my face out of it so you can see the label. Oh, there we go. There you go. Skin food, Pharaoh. See the little piggy there? Um, this is made with smart lard. The other is face food. And the face food product, give it a second and it'll focus. So face food, Pharaoh, and my bottle's empty so it's harder to read it. 
but it's empty because I just scraped the last bit of it out of there. Arrow. But I'll put a link to him down below. What Charles has created is a line of hand lotions and face lotions that are 100% uh, natural lard uh, based. Let me tell you something. These products are amazing. The lotion on my hands, what I love to use it for, I'm a knitter. And so yarn running across my fingers, right, in, in air conditioning um, really can dry my skin out. It's even worse in the winter. It's even worse when there's heat pumping and then it's going. My skin just turns, starts flaking. And so the skin food um, lotion I use on my hands when I'm knitting, what I've noticed about it is my skin absorbs that lotion it creates a little resistance on my needles and my yarns. They're not sliding around and it doesn't, it's not oily. It doesn't soak into the yarn that I'm knitting with. It's amazing. But I started using his face food a while back, a long time ago, to be honest with you. He originally sent me some samples and then he sent me, and the first round of samples he sent, I was really good. And I gave out to some girlfriends um, up in North Carolina. And then he sent me another set of samples and I was a jerk and used every one of them. Oops. So I signed up for his subscription and I'm going to order a few to hand out some to some friends um, because I used up all the samples. Um, it's so nice on my skin and my skin um, has been really, really good. Um, my skincare routine, thanks to the face food, is really simple. I wash my face and then I put that lotion on. <laughs> I mean, that's it. What do I use to wash my face? Whatever. I mean, whatever I have a bottle of. It's not groundbreaking. Um, so in defense of lard, and I'll check, get you a Charles Mayfield uh, connection there too, if you're interested in that product. Now this is one you wear dot eat, but, um, anyway, it drove me to that, to think about that. So, um, I wanted to mention that I, I myself, 2022, we're wrapping this year up, um, have been on quite a journey. I have lost and gained about 18 pounds. Um, I have really depleted myself nutritionally, really built it right back up, and then sort of faded somewhere in the middle. So I'm on a bit of a journey there myself. But um, what I will say is that this book, if I am willing to pick this thing up, and just read for a few moments a recipe, a conception, any concept that she has, any page in here. It will reinvigorate me to get myself back on track to pay closer attention. Um, I also want to mention one other thing she has in this book that I think is really handy. And for those who are local that are going to come take my Nourish Kitchen cooking classes with me in 2023, I'm offering a series of classes that I've called the Nourish Kitchen um, I have created some similar charts to these. Mine are different uh, because they're focused on kind of a different idea here. But I want to put... Okay. So on pages 184 and 185, she has these charts. I know I look like a kooka movie. wonder what I'm doing. I promise there's a purpose here. I want to show you these charts without giving them away. I want you to be able to just freeze frame this video and copy all of her hard work. I want you to buy the book and support the author. But, um, okay. She has these charts, porridges and cooked whole grains. There's two charts here. And then I'll show you one page closer so you get an idea of what she's done. And it is the grain, does it contain gluten, the flavor profile, the nutritional information, and then how to prepare it for cooking and baking. How cool is this? So the first, the two I'll show you are oats and quinoa. So you see what I'm saying? So it's a little chart and you can see that this chart carries on down with all of these and there's another page of them over here. So one column is what it is. So in this case, it's quinoa. Does it contain gluten? No. What's its flavor profile? Grassy. Here's um, the nutritional uh, load on it. So it's loaded with vitamin E, Thiamine, niacin, B6, folate, iron, magnesium, phosphorus, zinc, copper, and manganese. Um, and then how to prepare it is here. Pretty cool, right? A couple pages of those. I mean, geez, buy the book and just copy those two pages and put them on your fridge. Remind yourself, easy, easy little charts of how to use it. 
the way that I have set up the charts I've done for Nourish Kitchen are more focused on what the item is. So let's say dried apricots, what dried apricots can bring to the show and ways that we can use them in our kitchen. So dried apricots, um, what they bring to the show is they are one of the greatest vegetarian sources of iron. So, um, and, and among other things. So I list all of those things. And then next to that, I'll give you some ideas of how we bring it in. Obviously chopped apricots go into oatmeal and salads and uh, muffins and breads, right? They can go into so many great things. Um, when I am really in a crunch, it's a day that I'm going to be in my car from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. and then teaching from 6 to 8 p.m. This is not a day that a sit-down meal is going to happen for me. They're all going to come out of wrappers out of my purse. Um, I'll carry apricots and beef jerky and all organic, all natural beef jerky. Boom. Talk about an iron source. I can't eat a steak right? And spinach in the car. So here's a good answer. Anyway, um, I love her nutritional charts, but hers are based on porridges and cooked whole grains. Mine are based more on um, just a plethora of ingredients that we can use to get some of these vitamins and minerals into our bodies and then ways to cook with them to get them there. So um, the Nourish Kitchen Farm to Table Recipes for a Traditional Foods Lifestyle. That is your cookbook corner. For those Gumroad subscribers, um, thank you guys. I appreciate your support. And I saw a lot of you renewed this year. That makes me really happy. Um, I am going to include um, a recipe from my Nourish Kitchen classes that are coming in your printables this for this um, podcast. And if you are a YouTube subscriber, um, Thank you for being here and uh, don't forget to give us a like and share this with some friends um, and check out the other cookbook corners. If you just go click video, you'll see all of the cookbook corners. There's billions of billions. I mean, there's 20. <laughs> um, there's lots of cookbook corners. I'll keep them coming. Um, if you're looking for a funny one, the Betty Crocker is hilarious, uh, I think. But if you're looking for ones that support this kind of concept, check out Power Bowls, uh, Power Plates. Power Plates was the name of, of that cookbook. Um, it's a great one. And um, so that's it. That's, that's the cookbook corner. And I'm going to do about a five minute run through on some admin for those who are subscribers to this channel or to Gumroad and want to kind of know where we're headed. So very quickly, what I will say is that I am switching focus a bit and stepping away from the Q&A with Chef A. Um, Q&A with Chef A has been a lot of fun, but I've answered a lot of cues. Um, I've aid a lot of cues, and those videos are available. They're there. They're not going anywhere. If you're on a paid platform like Gumroad, they're going to always be available for you. If you're on a YouTube platform, we have no intention of taking them down. Um, I am going to make some changes to the YouTube channel. Uh, we will be changing the name and some of the graphics that you see, some of the title cards and things like that are going to switch out. Um, so as you see those changes, the material and content that's already been recorded and uploaded will stay. Uh, we're just shifting gears as we move forward. And what are we shifting into? What we're shifting into, guys, is what I would consider more of maybe a vlog cast, something like that. Um, I'll be doing um, most of the recordings from here at my home. As you can see, I'm not at work today. <laughs> so recordings from here at the house and the new vlog title. Uh, and I'm going to do a little introduction video for this as well. So if you've seen this in the introduction video, you can just move on. But the title of the new vlog is What's Feeding Me with Chef A. So um, I want to talk more about what's feeding me. I want to talk more about, we'll continue with my favorite cookbook reviews in the What's Feeding Me, but also in What's Feeding Me, I'll be sharing with you maybe a cooking utensil that I just absolutely adore in my kitchen or a new ingredient that I'm working with or an old steady ingredient that I've always hung on to and loved. Um, but I also want to share some more lifestyle focused items with you in what's feeding me because what's feeding me is not just work, of course, and not just cookbooks or just cooking. I'll be sharing with you some of my hobbies and crafts. As many of you know, I'm a knitter. I'm pointing at a sweater that I knitted. Um, so I'll be sharing with you some of my knitting content. Um, and uh, I also am going to uh, add a segment toward the end that's called A Mindful Moment with Chef Andrea, Chef A, um, as I myself am trying so desperately to make 2023 the year that we slow down. And taking those mindful moments is a big 
part of this practice for me and something that I've really worked to incorporate in my own lifestyle day to day. So I'll be sharing a mindful moment with you and maybe a little tip or trick or tool, app, you know, book, concept, something um, that leads you hopefully to consider a mindful moment in your day as well. So the vlog will be uh, What's Feeding Me with Chef A and we'll be launching that very, very soon. Hey, gum roaders, um, take a look at introduction to what's feeding me. Um, and YouTubers, you're welcome to take a look at that too. Uh, I'll be doing about a 10 minute intro into the new vlog so you know what's coming and what to expect, what your membership dollars paid for. Our Gumroad members pay $25 to be members for a year. And what that's given them are printable um, copies of recipes that I create based on the podcast that I do. Um, so those printable materials are what you're getting a hold of, but also there's some bonus video content that gum rotors get access to as well. Um, so look for that video. I'm going to stop talking. We're 40 minutes in. Nourished Kitchen, Jennifer Magruda. Um, I hope you'll check it out. Uh, really fun. These are preserved lemons, by the way. If you've never made them, they are fun to make. If you're like any of us in Florida who end up with a lemon tree in the yard that is just you know, producing well beyond your ability to eat lemons, preserve them. Um, they're a lovely addition. Traditional Moroccan uh, cuisine ingredient, but you'll find that more and more um, people, uh, cuisines have incorporated them. Uh, they are really lovely flavor. So, all right. That's it. Nourish Kitchen. I hope we'll see you here again another time. Thank you so much for joining us today for a cookbook corner. And I hope you guys have a very well nourished very inclusive, very delicious day.